I hereby move that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the Committee of Judiciary, on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters and the Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs on the National anti Bill 2024 SB 461 be received and considered. I so move. Issa Jibrin, representing the very good people of Kogi East. Mr. President, I rise to second the motion that the Senate do receive and consider the report of the committees on judiciary, human rights and legal uh, matters, and federal character and intergovernmental affairs on the national anthem, Bill 2024, SB 461. I so second. The motion has been moved and seconded that this allow chamber do receive the report on the National Anthem Bill 2024. Those in support of the motion say aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. Yes, you may proceed to lay the report. The Senate in the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the Joint Committees on Judicial, Human Rights and Legal Matters and Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs of the National Anthem Bill 2024 and approve as follows. Long title as recommended. Number of clauses, clauses one to eight as recommended. Interpretation clause nine as recommended. Short title clause 10 as recommended. Schedule one, as recommended. Explanatory memorandum as recommended. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Rule? Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Rule? Leader of the Senate, Leader of the Senate, you may wish to move a motion for the bill to be read at that time. Distinguished colleagues, the motion has been moved and seconded that this bill be now read at that time. Those in support of the motion say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Clerk of the Senate. Distinguished colleagues, a bill for an act to provide for the national anthem of Nigeria and for matters related there to 2024. Third reading taken and passed. Let me, at this stage, appreciate Distinguished Senator Monguru and also all the other committees that worked on this bill and I appreciate all Nigerians, very prominent Nigerians who attended a public hearing on this bill, including senior advocates of Nigeria. I think one of them was uh, senior advocate uh, uh, Mike Ozegome and so many others, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives and former Governor of uh, Sokoto State, who was also the very distinguished Senator Tambua, and many of our colleagues and other members of the Nigerian public, civil society organization, and others. I want to thank Senator Mongunu, who was leading this uh, joint committee of the Senate for a wonderful job done. Uh, the nation will never forget you. And for just the avoidance of doubt, the bill that has just been passed now, awaiting the assent of Mr. President, goes like this. 
Nigeria, we held the our own dear native land. Though tribes and tongues may differ, in brotherhood we stand. Nigerians all are proud to save our sovereign motherland. Our flag shall be a symbol that truth and justice reign. In peace or battle, we must honor the flag, and this we count as gain. To hand on to our generation, to hand on to our children, a banner without stain. O oh God of creation, I'm now quoting direct. Grant this our one request. Help us to build a nation where no man is oppressed. And so with peace and plenty, Nigeria may be blessed. My distinguished colleagues, I believe this aptly captures the mood of the nation. That even if you were to be from Adamawa and you have over 87 ethnic groups or tribes, your tongues may differ, but in brotherhood we stand. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, one impression, and which is the submission by the learned Attorney General of the Federation to the effect that this bill should be subjected to zonal public hearings, should be subjected to referendum, should be subjected to concurrence of the State Houses of Assembly, and should also be subjected to the concurrence of the Federal Executive Council. I beg to disagree with you. Are you doing a constitution? Yes, that is what I want to say. Because even when he made that submission, quite a number of members of our committee disagreed with him that this is an ordinary bill. And the process for lawmaking in a bill is first reading, second reading, public hearing, then consideration, and third reading. And that is exactly what we are doing. The process he came and initiated is a process that concerns the amendment of the Constitution. We are not amending the Constitution, and therefore, we are not supposed to follow that fact. The fact that we are following is in consonance with our rules, and is also in consonance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I beg to disagree, and the committee disagreed with the submissions made by the Federal Attorney General. Again, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Senator Mongulu, the Attorney General is not a lawmaker. No lawmaker. Uh, and then you are the lawmaker. We are the lawmakers. So, uh, the, so Senator, yes, yes, yes why? You. Are you agreeing with you? And then also the issue that uh, it has to have concurrence of the Federal Executive Council. Our roles are clearly divided in the Constitution. This, this is uh, Senator Mongunu. The Senate, the National Assembly, is independent of the executive. So, the person you are talking about is a member of the executive. Bill was sponsored as clearly uh, discussed in the course of the second reading is in paragraph 2.0 while the committee's legislative action so far is also contained in paragraph 3.0 while what happened in the public hearing is contained in paragraph 4.0 and then the highlights of the presentation of the stakeholders is also contained in paragraph 4.1, while the general observations made by the committee is in 5.0, and one of the pertinent general observations, if I can just give highlight of the general observation, is that what this bill seeks to do is to give a legal framework to the national anthem before the national anthem doesn't have the backing of law. But what, we are going to, what, we are, what this bill seeks to achieve is to give it 
a backing of law so that it can bite and bite with all the legal powers embedded in it. It is pertinent to state categorically that for the first time in the history of the nation that the parliament is making a legal framework for providing the national anthem for the country and has followed all the steps of lawmaking process, including public hearing in order to elicit for beef stroke opinions of Nigerians. The parliament considered the proposed bill important as the national anthem is a representation of the country's history, culture, and people. It is a symbol of national identity and unity reflecting the aspirations and values of the Nigerian people. The framework created by the parliament outlines the proper rendition and performance of the national anthem, ensuring that it is treated with the respect and dignity it deserves. This includes guidelines for when and where the national anthem should be played, as well as the appropriate manner in which it should be sung or performed. In summary, the significance of the parliament creating a framework provide, for providing the national anthem in Nigeria lies in its role, unifying symbol of national identity and its importance in fostering a sense of patriotism and unity among the Nigerian people. Observations and findings. After the public hearing, the committee critically and painstakingly analyzed the presentation made and just opposed in it in line with the provisions of the bill. Accordingly, the committee makes the following observations and findings. That the purpose of the bill is apt and timely at this critical moment in the history of our dear country, Nigeria. That the contemplation of the bill, as well as its provision, conform to normative drafting standards and in tandem with the spirit of unity, harmony, and peaceful coexistence amongst the citizens. That the rendition and the musical precision of the old national anthem, which is being proposed for adoption in this bill, will undoubtedly inspire patriotism and zeal for cooperation and integration as the hallmark for indivisibility. That the passage of the bill will provide the needed platform for sensitization of citizenry and our core value system by the National Orientation Agency. The adoption of the old national anthem will preserve and promote the country's cultural heritage for future generations. That the bill, if passed, will be of symbolic significance as changing the national anthem will symbolize Nigeria's transition towards greater unity, inclusivity, and progress as a nation. That by adopting the new national anthem, certainly Nigeria demonstrates respect for its cultural traditions while also embraces positive change within its society. That with the passage of this bill, an arbitrary change on the national anthem will be avoided as is subjected to legislative process. Thus, a precedent has been established to be followed soon. That the Senate co Joint Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, and Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs, having exhaustively carried out painstaking legislative actions on this bill, hereby recommends as follows: that the Senate do pass the bill for an act to provide for the National Anthem of Nigeria and for related matters, SB 461. I so move. And in conclusion. On behalf of the members of the Committee of Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters and Federal Character and uh, Governmental Affairs, I want to thank the President of the Senate and indeed my respected colleagues for the opportunity and the confidence reposed on us to serve in this capacity. Thank you. But there is just one or two things I think we need to review and I seek your deep reflection on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, excuse me, sir. I am all for whatever is agreeable to all of us. I beg to plead that where tribe is used, we should change it to ethnic. Where you talk of native land, I am not a native man, we should talk of fatherland or motherland. The word native. So that we don't mislead ourselves and the public is not misled. The word 
tribe is defined in the dictionary. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. For the avoidance of doubt, I want to quote uh, His Excellency Distinguished Senator Adams Aliyo Shomole. Again, he never at any point expressed opposition to this bill. He's in support of this bill. But his quarrel or concern was with respect to the use of the word tribe in the first stanza. Do tribe, uh, yes, may differ in brotherhood we stand. And he said he believed the word tribe is about nativity and primitivity. And that he's not primitive, he's not a primitive and he's quarreling with the word. The rest of us are choosing to go with the word just by the simple definition of the word tribe in the dictionary, which reads as follows. Tribe is defined as a social group composed chiefly of numerous families, clans, or generations having a shared ancestry and language. That is the dictionary definition of the word tribe. And on that note, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. All right. The word the tribe is defined in the dictionary as a social group composed chiefly of numerous families, clans, or generations having a shared ancestry and language. And on that note, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, may I most respectfully move that the Senate revert to plenary so that uh, the chair can report progress. I so move, Mr. Chairman. A native is defined as a person born in a specified place or associated with a place by birth, whether subsequently resident there or not. Could note where he was born. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> in that circumstance, therefore, I second the motion that uh, the Senate reverse to a plenary for the chair to report progress. And my humble self and uh, my colleagues, Senator Olare Uyewumi and Senator Osita Ngu, as course. And and Rufai Hanga, uh, Senate Minority Deputy Whip, as co-sponsors. And so, Mr. President, we are kind of indulgent. The three colleagues, and um, I told him that, that we, he said he wants to come under Order 1, Section B, that says that in all cases not provided for, in the standing orders of the Senate, or by sessional or other orders or practices of the Senate, the Senate shall, by resolution, regulate its procedure. Is it the view of the Senate 
that utilizing this section 1B, that he be allowed to proceed with this uncommon motion in these uncommon times. Those in support say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. So, Dr. Amuro, we have waived our rules. You may proceed. The Senate notes that on Tuesday, 12th March 2024, this very revered 10th Senate in plenary suspended the former chairman of the Northern Senators Forum, Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi of Bauchi Central Senatorial District, for three months following. A media interview he granted the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC House Service, on March 9, 2024, in which he alleged that about 3.7 trillion naira, representing over 10% of the 2024 budget, was illegally inserted into the 2024 national budget. Note further that Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi was asked to address this allegation of budget padding against the National Assembly following a motion of urgent national importance moved by Senator Solomon Olamilekon Adeola, the Chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriations. And failing to address the allegations, the Senate resolved to suspend Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi for three months for violating legislative rules, misconduct, and unethical behavior for the interview he granted on BBC Media on the 2024 Appropriation Act, a legislation which process he was part of. And aware that the said Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi, being under suspension, has spent over two months outside the precincts of the National Assembly complex and needs to return to continue with his legislative activities as a senator representing Bachi's Central Senatorial Addiction. Flowing from the above, the Senate Minority Leadership takes full responsibility for the actions of our colleague Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi and apologizes on his behalf. Accordingly, the Senate resolves to reconsider the additional resolution of the Senate 1 of the votes and proceedings of Wednesday, 13th March 2024, to recall Senator Abdul Ahmed Ningi to the Senate as Senator representing Bauchi Central Senatorial District. I so move, Mr. President. I stand to second the motion. Heavily moved by the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Abba Moro. And I would like to add, Mr. President, that this Senate is the highest assembly in our sovereign land of Nigeria. A Senate that is composed of men and women of wisdom. A Senate that believes in a philosophy promoted by a British poet, Alexander Pope, that maintains that to err is human and to forgive is divine. It's on this note that I want to commend the minority leader and his team. In, in fact, the entire minority caucus and the entire leadership of the minority caucus and the minority caucus itself because I know they must have acted based on the prompting of uh, the members of the caucus for going in between and for making sure they get to where we are now by bringing forward this motion in a way that the resolution of the issue of Nigi suspension is resolved finally. It is something that they need to be commended for because they've gone to mediate, going up and down to make sure that they are not even agreeing. They have you know, stated in the motion that they are apologizing on his behalf. They are apologizing on his behalf. So I commend you for doing that. And I urge the Senate, I urge the Senate, having apologized, the leadership having apologized on behalf of our Senator Ningi, we should accept this apology so as to strengthen our spirit of brotherhood that we are known for. Something has been done, and uh, the leadership on its own has come out to apologize on his behalf. So I urge my colleagues to please accept this apology without debate so that we can move forward. We are all brothers. And as I said earlier, 
you know, making error is something that is human. And forgiveness is divine. So I therefore submit that uh, please, we should urge, I mean, I urge my colleagues to accept this apology so that we can move forward. Thank you, Mr. President. OFR, I represent the good people of Anambra Central Senatorial District. Mr. President, I rise to support this motion that our distinguished brother, Senator Abdul Ningi, be recalled from his suspension following this very important motion from the minority leader on behalf of the minority caucus. Senator Abdul Ningi, no doubt, is our friend and is somebody we cherish so much. The spirit of this motion has met the demand and the request of this Senate previously. An apology should be given for that unfortunate interview where we are almost put on the spot as if we did things we did not do. So uh, in the spirit of uh, brotherhood, I rise to wholeheartedly so, uh, support that this Senate should recall Abdul Ningi for the few uh, weeks left of this suspension so that we rejoin us and continue to contribute robustly to the debates we do have in this plenary uh, on motions and uh, bills. I support without any reservation. Let us temper justice with mercy. Thank you, Mr. President. Contributions. It will take the whole day. Is there any senator who is opposed to this motion? Wow. So if there is nobody who is opposed to the motion, then uh, I'll put the question. Those in support of the motion moved by the minority leadership and duly seconded that Senator Abdul Ningi, who was suspended from this August Assembly on the 12th day of March 2024, be recalled to participate in all proceedings of the Senate. Henceforth, say aye. Those again say nay. It is unanimous. Accordingly, Senator Abdul Ningi is hereby pardoned by the 10th Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and is also hereby recalled to participate in all proceedings of the 10th Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me thank the minority leadership for this initiative and also note that it was uh, this same Senate that set up a committee for you to mediate. And then you were the chairman. And then, of course, this decision by the minority leadership and the entirety of the minorities in the Senate seems to have superseded the earlier uh, decision of the Senate that even uh, set up a committee. So I agree with you. He's a very resourceful senator uh, and one of our own, and the Senate is a family, irrespective of political divide, irrespective of religious divide, irrespective of languages. This happening today goes in tandem with the spirit of what the National Assembly, both the Senate and the House of Reps have done by bringing back our old national anthem, which simply says that those tribes and tongues may differ. In brotherhood, we stand. The decision of the Senate today is clear evidence that this is one family. And though we may come from different constituencies and different states, in brotherhood, we stand. I congratulate the Senate for this decision. And I agree that yes, to err is human, but to forgive is divine. And therefore, the single brother, Senator Abdul Ningi, is hereby recalled to the Senate to participate in all activities. Senate Leader. Mr. President, very distinguished senators of the first day of May being the handing over date and the one, one year anniversary of the current administration for a joint session with our colleagues in the House of Representatives at 10 a.m. prompt. The motion has been seconded. Those in support say aye. Those again say nay. 
The eyes have it. Salim Mustafa representing Kuala Central. I rise today to bring this matter of public urgent importance in Boshuan to Order 41 and 51, but which has been overruled with 42 now. The Senate Standing Orders 2023 amended for urgent investigation and resolution of the challenges of tuition and payment other welfare-related problems faced by Nigerian students of federal government overseas, commonwealth and bilateral scholarship programs. The federal government of Nigeria awards annual scholarship to outstanding students from across the country to further their graduate and undergraduate studies internationally thereby fostering a cadre of exceptional professional for national development. Also note that these scholarships are part of a broader initiative to promote specialized education through partnership with foreign institutions, facilitated by entities such as the Federal Scholarship Board under the Federal Ministry of Education. This initiative supports the government's commitment to bilateral education agreements, BEA, and multilateral agreements with Commonwealth and other international partners. Aware of reports of Nigerian students facing hardship in Algeria, China, Morocco, Russia, and the United Kingdom due to non-payment of tuition and living stipends, leading to negative media coverage and national embarrassment. Concern that the recurrence of these issues suggests systematic failure despite previous interventions by these distinguished chambers to prevent such situations. Worried that the federal government's failure to meet its financial commitment under this international agreement for over 10 months will jeopardize the welfare and academic progress of the affected students. Conscious of the fact that failure to fulfill this obligation not only undermines our national reputation, but also poses significant diplomatic concerns and risk pushing out, I mean pushing out our students towards unlawful activities to sustain their livelihood abroad. The Senate may accordingly resolve to urge the President of the Senate to urgently inquire into the reasons behind these delayed payments and ensure that the necessary measures are taken to ratify this situation promptly. Call upon the Senate Committee on Education to summon the Federal Scholarship Board and the Minister of Education to provide a detailed report on the status of all Nigerian students under international scholarship programs, including a breakdown of unpaid entitlements, demand that the federal government impose appropriate sanction on the officials within the Federal Scholarship Board and Federal Ministry of Education who are accountable for this failing, thereby upholding the integrity of Nigeria's international commitments. Mr. President, I felt this was urgent enough because from what I read, it might not be as ugly as it is, but from what we've just seen in the news and in some of the media reports, it has gotten so bad now that some Nigerian students, like I said, have resolved to the unthinkable so as to be able to meet their means of livelihood over there. So I felt it was very important and germane for this Senate to quickly look into this and see how we can arrest the situation. Already last week in UK, Nigerian students studying there were denied total, I, I mean, um, entry into their schools or their class or their dorm. Those ones in 
Ukraine, Russia, Morocco. In fact, there's also a story of students who were caught in, do I say, um, house burglary. And at the end of the day, when these students are taken to the authorities, the embassy is being boarding that they should come and bail or rescue Nigerian students, which is creating a very negative image of the country. So I so submit, sir. Thank you. Sorry, Mustafa is well noted by the Senate, and I will only urge the relevant committees, Committee on Education, Committee on Basic Education, and others to look into the issue as he has raised. Thank you for yes, bringing point, this to the fore. Leader of the Senate. Point, point of order. Yeah, point of order. Point of order that raise, uh, that I'm raising concerns directly your administration of the proceedings of this Senate. Chief Whip, I think you should tell Senator Uba and Senator Piggy so that I can get the attention of the Senate President. Mr. Senate President, uh, it's order 38, and I decided to have your attention because it directly concerns your administration of the proceedings of this Senate. The operative word under order 38 is unless the Senate otherwise directs the business of each city, they shall be transacted in the following order. The operative word is shall. But they, uh, that's not the operative word. The operative word the is operative shall. The operative word is unless the Senate otherwise directs. And before I gave him consent, the Senate otherwise directed. Uh, 